So basically what you're looking at is an additive color palette. Computers use additive color palettes and that is because it is the color palette that is true to light. We see red, green, and blue light uh, with our eye when we're looking at the computer. So the computer actually um, uses this color method to create all the other colors possible. So red, green, and blue in various amounts will create all visible colors. And you can see that you have the red, green, blue on the outside, and then you have cyan, yellow, and magenta on the inside. This is an example of subtractive color scheme. This is something you would use if you were printing. And you can kind of see the primary colors uh, in this case are cyan, yellow, and magenta. And mixed together in various amounts, these three colors also produce all visible colors. And this is the color palette you would use if you were getting something commercially printed. So color is simply a property of light. And you can see that in this series of paintings that Monet did in London, that depending on what time of day you're looking at something, the light changes dramatically. And our eye is taught to see uh, things in a constant way. So our eye wants to see colors that perhaps aren't there. For example, we all, when we draw pictures as children, we usually draw green grass, even though grass is not inherently green. If you go out during the day at various times, it can be gray, it can be blue, it can be yellow. So this constancy effect kind of prevents us from actually seeing what's there. And it's our job as artists and designers to really interpret the color and see how it changes based on the quality of the light. Color um, really varies depending on what colors are next to it. You can kind of see this example. This kind of mauve color that I have in the middle looks almost muddy next to the green color, whereas when it's next to this kind of darker purple, it kind of really stands out and is bright. So when you develop your color palettes, um, it's really critical that you lay them next to all the colors that you're going to use in the palette and see how the colors affect them. This is another um, example of a color wheel. This is what we use when we paint with, with pigment. So fine artists use the yellow, blue, red color scheme. There's still three primaries. You have um, two, three secondaries. Sorry, you have green, orange, and uh, violet as your secondary color. And then you have all the other colors possible. So these are called the tertiary colors, and they're the third level. Uh, created by mixtures of the primary and secondary colors. And the reason I'm showing you all these different color wheels is just to let you know that uh, there's different systems of working with color, and so just to be prepared for that. So color always has properties, and one of the properties of color is value. And basically value is how much light or dark is added to the color. So if you look at these three colors in the middle, you can see that we've created tints and shades of each of these colors by adding white or adding gray. And when you start working digitally in Illustrator or Photoshop, you can go into your color palettes and just adjust, and adjust the value only, not the hue or the saturation. Saturation is another property of color. So you have value, saturation, and then the literal hue. And saturation is basically the vibrancy of the color. So you can kind of see these two colors have equal saturation. They're different in terms of the hue, but the saturation is the same. It's intense. So if you're working in Photoshop or Illustrator and you're working with um, an RGB color scheme, if you wanted to have the most saturated color possible, you would slide the color um, red all the way to 255 and slide the other two colors, green and blue, all the way to zero. And then you would have a very saturated color. So just kind of some examples of how color affects brilliance. So two highly charged primary colors next to each other create a very vibrant effect, create contrast. Um, our eye really gets drawn to it. So intensity is is the same as saturation. And you can kind of see these are um, different intensity levels. This one's more muted. This one's a little brighter. 
And it's hard to kind of gauge it when you're first starting out, but intensity and saturation and value are different, but they feel like uh, they're the same sometimes, but they are actually different properties of color.